How long do you think we have before the market crashes? Um, let's see, we got that next round of stimulus checks. Okay. I think end of this year, either, either and by the end of this year, you're going to start really feeling it when they start, when they start implementing $15 an hour minimum wage requirement, federal requirement amongst the states, when they start implementing that, cause that's a big thing that, uh, uh happened in the economy, $15 an hour minimum wage. So for those of you who work in the hospitality industry, hotels, you clean rooms, you clean, you're a janitor, you are in the food and beverage, you work at a restaurant, you're a bus boy, you're a waiter, you're a, you're a regular cook, you're not a chef yet, you're just a regular cook at a, at a restaurant, you're, you're more than, you are the most vulnerable people right now, okay? You're the most vulnerable because you already got smacked in the face in 2020 with COVID, shutting down the restaurants, distancing the tables. So that means less people coming to the restaurants, less people that the overall business can serve. So you've already got smacked, but get ready for the double smack. Because when the government requires that business owner to pay you $15 an hour, and let's say you work at a, you know, a small Italian restaurant and there's five waiters and now that business owner has to pay each of them from $8 an hour. They got to jump it up to 15 or whatever the thing is over the next year or two, they got to jump bye-bye to, to two, you're out. And then they're just going to roll with the three. That's what's going to happen because the business owner cannot afford to pay $15 an hour. The only companies that can afford to pay $15 an hour are your Apple, your Google, your Amazon, your Walmart, the big guys. Okay. But you're, like I said, the, the one location hotels, the one-off restaurants in the local area, right? When they implement that, that can be extremely dangerous to the, the people that are here, right? Not people like me, you know, consultants, financial advisors, and real estate people, investors. It doesn't help. It doesn't affect us at all, right? It affects people right here, right? People that are making 30, 40, 50K a year, you're going to get a double smack when they introduce that that increase in minimum wage. Understand that $15 an hour, right? Times that by 40 hours, times that by, you know, 52 weeks. You do know that's like poverty level. That's like 30K a year, 35K. It's, that's what it is, right? That's, it, it's, you're, you're really not doing anything. You're still at poverty level. So even if you went from $8 to 15, you're, you're at poverty level. And then what happens is that burger goes from $8 to, to, to $15, right? Your gas goes from $220 to $347 to $389 to $4. Your gallon of milk goes to $7. So all the prices that hyperinflation goes up, it's like as if you didn't get a raise anyways, right? So that's where it'll pop. That'll be the first indication, right? Of you'll, you'll see that pop occur. Any thoughts on how to manage 401k or stock investment during the market crash? Hello, senor, how you doing? So when it comes to 401k, so I think it's important to evaluate where you're getting information from. So I'm going to be totally open and transparent and honest and say, look, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. If I was to take a swing based off logic, just a swing, if I have a crystal ball, I know the market's gonna crash. Let's say I have a crystal ball. 
I know the market's going to crash this year, next year, coming, right? And I have a 401k. What are my options? Right? Most people know about rollovers. I can go into another type of asset, maybe cash value life, maybe self-directed Roth. I can, I can move this money from no control to control, right? Then there's, you know, just pulling out, killing it, canceling it. Some people do that. They're like, oh. I'm out. That's it. Had enough of the market. I want to go. I want to put the money in my control and put it to use. I'm willing to take the tax hit and all that stuff. That's another option. People talk about it. That's what's available. I'm not saying what to do. I'm saying here are the options that exist. Rollover. People do it into a cash value life insurance policy, into a self-directed Roth IRA account, into an annuity or something like that. Some people will just pull the money out. Some people will take a loan out. Um, some people, depending on how much control you have, you might want to, you know, get out of these expensive mutual funds into low cost index funds. So if you're in low cost index funds or zero cost index funds, S and P 500 and different things like that, you don't care about this. You don't care about market going up and down, things like that, All right? So when you're asking that question, what should I do with my investment? Uh, a better question to ask is, how bad do I need this money if the market were to crash, All right? So if you noticed in 2020, a lot of people pulled money out or took loans out of their 401k because there was no penalty and you can um, defer the taxes for three years. And if you pay it all back in three years, you pay nothing in taxes, right? That opportunity already passed, right? But some people took advantage of that. Why? Because the market crashed for them and their personal economy and they needed money badly. They needed money badly, okay? So you want to ask yourself, how tied am I to this money that I'm supposedly saving for retirement? Because if this is money that I'm supposedly saving for retirement, then I don't care about this because I know it'll go up more than it goes down. That's how investing works long term. That's how that works. But if I'm in a position where I got a ton of debt, my cash flow ain't pretty, my income's not that high, I got a few hundred grand in the 401k, the market crashes, my economy crashes, right? Because there's a difference between the market crashing and then your personal economy crashing. Anybody's personal economy can crash at any moment, anyone's, just like mine did in 2018 my personal economy crashed in summer of 2018. And then I had to make moves really, really quickly. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared, but I was prepared because I had at least velocity banking to pull me through. So those are the things to think on. How tied am I to this money? Am I willing to lose some of the money to be able to pull it out to then put it to work somewhere else and multiply it in a different environment. You want to ask yourself those questions.